Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Freeland here. You never know what's going to be on my screen, huh? All right, so I thought that uh, we would talk about today how your voice sounds when you talk about your informational book. So boys and girls, the first unit we read stories that were just stories, they weren't informational text. So a storytelling voice would be and once upon a time, there was a princess and her name was Violet and she lived in a forest, right? And it's a kind telling voice that tells the story. Well, boys and girls, informational text is not really told with that kind of a voice. When we talk about our informational text, we need to use a serious expert voice that shows that we know what we're talking about because we've really learned a lot about that. So we're going to watch a short video, um, part of this video about um, a man who is an expert about animals from Australia and his name is Steve Irwin. And so we're going to notice how he uses his voice and he might also use his hands when he talks about his um, things that he's an expert in. So boys and girls, I'll play a little bit of this video for you and listen to his voice and think, how is he sounding like an expert? All my life, the most venomous snakes in the world are the ones that I've mostly been working with. In actual fact, when I was four years of age, I stuck my foot right on a common brown snake, the second most venomous snake in the world, pinned it until Dad came up and got it. By crikey, I got into a lot of trouble. But it wasn't nearly as dangerous as the Egyptian cobra you're about to have a look at. This thing went off the Richter scale. It was so ballistic, it was launching itself out of the tree, trying to sink its fangs into me. Crikey, it was dangerous, really dangerous. I was just flat out keeping out of its way. Woo, one wild unit. This one is venomous, highly venomous. Cobra. Africa's full of cobras. I go for my sunglasses until I can work out what species it is. I've got to protect my eyes in case it's a spitter. Ah, looking behind, I can tell it's an Egyptian cobra. They don't spit. They've got huge, great fangs and capable of a penetrating bite and a huge, toxic amount of venom, which would kill an adult human easily. They're known for their aggression and powerful venom. I can't believe how aggressive this one is. It's gone straight into a tree. I reckon that the large mammals that have tramped straight past it have stirred it up. And coming from a land of large mammals, one of the best places you could retreat would be in a tree. This is the Egyptian cobra. And they're notoriously aggressive. Very toxic venom. And I tell you what, this snake is grumpy. Might have something to do with all that. The game animal. Let's see if I can get him out of there. <laughs> I have never seen a snake more aggressive than this in my life. It flew straight at us. As I gently try and manipulate its thick body with a forked stick, it's then that I understand the potential danger of this snake. It is so aggressive, it is beside itself. It's just all throwing itself straight at me. If I can get it on the ground, on the flat level ground, I've got a good chance. It means business. Its mouth open. This must be pretty typical. The Egyptian cobra. You're all right, mate. You're all right. You're all right, buddy. You're all right. You're okay. Settle down. You're all right, buddy. How's that for aggressive? He's a super aggressive snake. Right. He is so wide, so aggressive. 
Oh, boys and girls, <laughs> that was scary, wasn't it? Yikes! That's Dave Irwin. He knows his snakes, doesn't he? So, did you listen to the way he told about the snake? He was pretty excited, wasn't he? So, when we read our informational text and we are learning about our uh, topic, we want to say what we're going to say strongly and we're excited and maybe we use our hands to tell about it and about and so other people will understand how amazing it is all the things that we're learning about so boys and girls when you are sharing your book today with a friend so um, I want you to be use a strong uh, voice and just like Steve Irwin did, not a storyteller voice. He didn't say, oh, here's the mean snake. He was like, no, it's a venomous mean cobra, right? So, I mean, not everything is that scary, but you can use a strong voice to talk about what you're learning, what you're reading about, and maybe use your hand to signal. For example, I found a part of my book that said Thomas Edison had three things to do to light the world with electricity. He had to invent a light bulb that would last. He had to invent a way for electricity to light lights. And he had to invent a way to get the electricity to all the lights. So I might say, Thomas Edison had to do three things in order to invent electricity and light up the world. And then, um, invent the light bulb, not electricity. Invent the light bulb to light up the world. And then I could tell those three things. So, boys and girls, um, I hope you are enjoying what you're reading about. I hope you find something you're passionate about. Steve Irwin definitely did, right? And I hope you can share that with a strong voice um, to your partners.